Could I ask the clerk to call the roll? Honorable Mayor Schoenheider. Here. Alderman Waldeck. Here. Alderman Beidler. Here. Alderman Moore is absent. Alderman Pandalion. Here. Alderman Tack. Here. Alderman Reisberg. Here. Alderman Edelman. Here. Alderman Moreno. Here. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Biddy, very much. Could I ask everyone to stand at the presentation of the colors by the Lake Forest Police Department Honor Guard? And if you'd remove any non-religious headwear, please. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Good evening. First item on the agenda this evening is comments by mayor, and there are several. Uh, first item under that list is I'm very honored tonight to uh, be involved in something that I think is so reflective of our community. You know, it's hard to believe for me uh, this evening represents two years of sitting in this spot uh, serving as mayor of our community. And uh, in those two years, I've been very fortunate to meet a lot of terrific people people who have certainly given back to our community in many ways. And it's amazing to me the number of people in Lake Forest who are so willing and so ready to give back when asked. But you know, there are certain people in our community I've found as well who not only give back, but they seek out ways to give back. They seek out ways to get more deeply involved and more deeply ingrained. And tonight, we're really fortunate to be able to honor one of those individuals, someone who has looked for ways to give back so deeply and so passionately to Lake Forest to make it what it is. Tonight, uh, in, in just a moment, we're going to present the fifth Larry Temple Service Award. And I want to just mention the award is made in memory of Larry, Lawrence R. Temple, who served the city as an alderman representing the third ward when he suddenly passed away on August 12, 2000. A 24-year resident, Temple previously had served as a member of the Plan Commission and the Building Review Board. Temple chaired the Building Review Board from 1993 until 1998, and at the time the award was established at the urging of several of Temple's colleagues, then Mayor Howard J. Kerr observed, he loved Lake Forest and worked hard to protect its character and its quality of life. He had the capacity to relate and work with people to bring understanding, compromise, and solution of difficult issues. And tonight, we get the honor to present the fifth Larry Lawrence Temple Award. And I'd like to thank the, the Temple Award Committee, uh, former Mayor Jim Cowie, who can't be here this evening, uh, former Alderman Gail Hodges, and former Alderman Roger Moore, and former President of the Lake Forest Caucus, Scott Helton. And I'd like to take the opportunity at this point to introduce Scott Helton. Scott? Thank you, Mayor and City Council. It's interesting as the former president of the, of the uh, caucus, when I come I see a lot of people that I knew when they were kind of working their way up and, and this was the, always the goal was to select good people that could, could always serve and, and eventually become mayor or alderman and can continue to serve in that kind of a capacity. So I think that's great. Um, I hope that everyone when they came up tonight noticed 
on the wall when you get to the top of the stairs is the Larry Temple Award. And I think the location is kind of unique because I've always kind of considered as you come to serve on your board or committee and all the committees meet in, in usually in, this, in the council chambers, I always like to think that as you come up the stairs, you look at that award and you see the people that have been before you and the, and the quality of the work that they did. And I hope you'll follow in those footsteps uh, in the coming time to, to try to follow with, with the, uh, the job that like a Tim Christie did. And, and I just think that uh, the placement at the top of the stairs is perfect for, for this award. Uh, Tim Christie's name is on the plaque and it deserves to be on that plaque. And a lot of people in here have served on boards and committees with Tim Christie. So I think they're gonna know that a lot's expected of me as I serve on the plan commission or whatever it might be to try to follow in Tim Christie's footsteps, which are quite large. I'm kind of fortunate because Tim Christie was one of the first people that I met when I came to, to Lake Forest. Um, my wife and I had, I think we had dinner over at Deer Path and we were walking over to Sweets for an ice cream cone. And I had been on the village board in Glenview for 12 years. And there was a lot of cars over by City Hall, so I said, Jenny, let's go over and take a look and see what's, what's going on, because we'd only been here a couple weeks. So we came in, and there was a zoning board meeting, and I knew a couple of the zoning commissioners, and they kind of waved. And uh, all of a sudden, there was somebody behind us, and he just kind of poked his head in and goes, hi, I'm Tim Christie. And I thought he was like the Lake Forest greeter. We'd only been here, you know, a short period of time. <laughs> and and uh, Tim said, well, what are you doing here? <clears throat> And I said, well, I, I came over just to, to see how government runs in Lake Forest, you know, because I just came from Glenview. So we went out in the vestibule and, uh, and talked about it, and, and, and we became fast friends. And Jan thought the world of Tim, as, as I'm sure a lot of other people that, you know, have an interest in Lake Forest do. So Tim kind of looks at us, and he goes, well, you guys are new. He goes, and you've got to learn about Lake Forest. He says, and I've lived here my whole life, and he gave us a little bit of history. And he said, what are you doing on Saturday? So I said, well, I'm, I'm not sure. So he goes, well, I think you should go over to the cemetery, you know, where the Lake Forest Cemetery. I think that's where you should go. And I'm like, gee, Tim, I've only been here two weeks. You know, do you want me to go to the cemetery? <laughs> and he goes, no, no, no. He says, they do a tour of the cemetery. And there's a lot of history when they do the cemetery tour about Lake Forest. And it was the greatest thing that we did, you know, within our first two weeks to go on that cemetery tour. And that was it at Tim's suggestion. And it was really... A lot of fun, we learned a lot, and we continue to try to still learn a lot about Lake Forest. Um, I was also on the, and I see Sandy Stewart is here, I was on the Conway Farms Architectural Review Board. And Tim was always very careful. He, he sort of took me under his wing when I got on the board, <laughs> kind of explained, I went over to his office and we talked about what the Architectural Review Board does. And uh, he just wanted me to make sure that the day, first day I went to an Architectural Review Board meeting, that I'd be an effective member of that board. And I'm sure that, that Tim has done that with many of members of the other boards to sort of lay the groundwork as to what they do, what the purpose of that board is, and always make sure that they're up and ready for their, for their first meeting. So Tim has just, uh, he, he's done this for many other people, and all I can say is thank you, Tim, for everything you've done for Lake Forest, for your inclusive and your sensitive style of good governance. Thank you, Tim. The Lawrence R. Temple Distinguished Public Service Award to honor a living volunteer on local government in the city of Lake Forest for distinguished public service. Whereas individuals selected by the Lawrence R. Temple Distinguished Public Service Award must demonstrate leadership, responsiveness to the public, and staff, duration and scope of service, constructive participation in meetings, and the ability to represent the community's values. And whereas Tim Christie was nominated for the Lawrence R. Temple Distinguished Public Service Award, and whereas the award committee was struck by his depth and breadth of civic service to the city of Lake Forest, and whereas during his tenure 
on many boards and commissions, including the Historic Preservation Commission, serving as its first chairman, Building Review Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, and Plan Commission, he maintained open, responsive communication between city staff and residents and was known for a steadying wisdom which always produced a positive outcome for all involved. And whereas Tim is a lifelong Lake Forest resident, attending the public schools, First Presbyterian Church, and building a career as a landscape architect, where his expertise and knowledge in the area were often sought out by many. And whereas Tim Christie is a wealth of local historic knowledge and is a committed steward of Lake Forest, believing volunteering is his civic duty and a responsibility. And whereas the award committee believes that Tim Christie, like Larry Temple, has distinguished himself with civic contributions that benefit the citizens of Lake Forest. Now, therefore, Tim Christie is awarded the Lawrence R. Temple Distinguished Public Service Award this 20th day of January, 2015. Congratulations. Tim, on behalf of the City Council, and the entire city staff, and every resident of the City of Lake Forest, thank you for all you've done for our community. Can we ask the uh, Temple Committee to uh, get near Tim so we can get a picture of everybody? Very short speech. And Scott? Thank you. Next item on the agenda, resolution of appreciation for retiring Police Sergeant Brian R. Verbeke. I'd like to read the resolution. Whereas Brian R. Verbeke has been a devoted, dedicated city employee to the City of Lake Forest since December 31, 1987. And whereas Brian R. Verbeke has, will honorably retire from the city on January 18, 2015. 
and whereas Brian R. Verbeke is a second generation Lake Forest police officer, and whereas Brian R. Verbeke served in the following positions during his dedicated career, patrol officer, field training officer, detective, truck enforcement officer, sergeant, and field training supervisor. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Lake Forest that the Council, on behalf of the administration and residents of the community, hereby expresses its appreciation and gratitude to Brian R. Verbeke for a public service faithfully performed. And be it further resolved that the City Clerk be and hereby is instructed to deliver a copy of this duly signed resolution by the Mayor to Brian R. Verbeke on this 20th day of January. 2015. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, unanimously approved. Congratulations, Brian. I really don't have much to say because I think the reality of this finally sank in that I'm no longer going to be serving the fine people of Lake Forest. But I do want to thank the city staff, particularly my co-workers, for making it such an enjoyable experience as well as the citizens. And most of all, my lovely wife Tracy, my sons Kyle and Cameron, for being there with me the entire time. It's truly been a pleasure and thank you for this honor. Next item on the agenda, promotion of Officer Kevin Zelf to Sergeant Chief Jim Hill. This is, the, this is fun. Um, as Bob is fond of saying, uh, comings mean going, or goings mean coming. So this Kevin here is going to replace Sergeant Verbeke. Kevin started with the police department in 2006. And there's a word that I'm going to use quite a bit when I talk about him very briefly here. Uh, when he started, he was recognized very quickly as being an exceptional police officer, an exceptional patrol officer. He did everything he did meticulously and thoroughly. He uh, soon became one of our evidence technicians, very thorough job. He was exceptional at that job. He was so exceptional that he applied for and was uh, made an evidence technician for the Lake County Major Crimes Task Force. He was one of the lead evidence technicians handling homicides all over the county. He then was made a detective in our department. His work was exceptional. Uh, never left a stone unturned. Thorough, documented everything. Um, we had some major cases. Kevin was the guy that was able to put it all together, make sense of it, and come to a successful conclusion. I don't want to go an awful lot about Kevin's ability because I can't because most of it's technological stuff and I don't understand it all. But <laughs> as I said, when we kind of did his official thing at the station, don't leave your iPhone or iPad laying around because he'll find a way to get in there on it. So <laughs> I'm going to have his wife pin his star on him right now.
couldn't agree more with Chief Held. That's one of the most fun things we get to do. Next item on the agenda, Stormwater Commission Award presentation. I'd like to ask Ralph Gaswaldo, President of the Forest Park Project Board, to come up. Ralph. Thank you, Mayor and Alderman, for allowing us to be here tonight to present an award back to the city. Um, the city has given out some awards and some things tonight, and we're going to try to give one back to you. Forest Park has been awarded the Lake County Stormwater Management Commission's 2014 Development of the Year Award. This award honors one of the important goals of this project. It was presented to the Forest Park Project Board in the City of Lake Forest for the following reasons. The Forest Park Project is being commended for addressing infrastructure needs, solving drainage issues, prompting sustainability, maintaining natural site amenities, and encouraging ravine education as part of the Forest Park Master Plan. The project provides a system of bioswells and rain gardens, impervious surface reduction, permeable paving, and native landscaping that provide on-site stormwater storage, filtration, and infiltration. Sustainable landscaping and water quality, quality benefits for Lake Michigan. In addition, the project restored flatwood wetlands for habitat and educational purposes, along with ravine educational signage at Seminary Ravine. Equally impressive is the Forest Park Project Board, a private-public partnership established to finance and construct the project and to maintain the historical 30-year park, 30-acre park, one of the latest green, the last green open spaces along Lake Michigan. As we know, the Forest Park Project um, is a public private partnership between the City of Lake Forest and a number of the residents of Lake Forest. It's a partnership that has worked extremely well. You know, a partnership that probably you're looking for something similar with the Aquatic Center possibly in the future. But I have to tell you, as I sit here tonight and as a long-term resident of Lake Forest, I can't tell you how blessed I feel at times to be a resident of Lake Forest because of projects like this, because of people like Tim that we just talked about tonight. Because of the city council, the mayor, the, the time and effort that you donate to the city. Um, I, I think we're blessed to live in a community that we live in. Um, and the Forest Park Project is one of those things that I feel very blessed to be part of. It's been an extreme success. And those of you that haven't been down there and haven't seen the success and the changes that have taken place for the future generations to come, it's absolutely amazing. And, and when the snow continues to melt and we get closer to those springs, I encourage everyone to go out there. Um, it's been extremely successful in our fundraising. We've raised over $3 million in donations, you know, to improve the, the, the public park. And, and I think that's absolutely amazing. You know, I also feel blessed um, to be part of a city that has a number of employees and a number of staff that have been exceptional to deal with as a Fort Park Project Board. Bob Kiley, under his leadership and his stewardship to work with, with the Forest Park Projects, has been excellent. Without Bob's leadership, I don't think we'd have raised the money. I don't think we'd have won this award, and we wouldn't have gotten to the point we're at. Bob's got some great people to work underneath him as well. Kathy Cerniak, Mike Thomas, uh, they've just absolutely been a pleasure to work with and have been instrumental in, in our success. Two people that I'd like to just recognize tonight that have been instrumental in us winning this award for stormwater management have been Bob Ells and Chuck Myers. You know, their leadership, they're the ones that, that really deserve the award. They went to the Stormwater Management Council. You know, they petitioned for it. They entertained them. They brought them out to the site. And under their leadership and under their direction, we won this award. So when we accepted it on behalf of the Forest Park Project in the city, immediately, um, I think it was Peter, who's been a treasurer, um, Peter Cherry, and it was kind of his idea to bring forth, he said, really, this is an award that deserves to be hanging in the city of Lake Forest. And so on behalf of the Forest Park Project Board, we'd like to present it to the city. We'd like to give the award back to you because that's truly where it, where it belongs. And once again, I feel blessed just to be able to do that. So thank you very much.
Next item on the agenda under Mayor's Report, Resolution of Sympathy for former City Al uh, Attorney Murray Councilman, and I'll read the resolution. Whereas on behalf of the City of Lake Forest, the City Council expresses its sadness at the profound loss of Murray R. Councilman on January 6, 2015. Whereas Murray R. Councilman was a civic-minded and valued resident of Lake Forest, serving as City Attorney for the City of Lake Forest from 1984 to 2000. Whereas Murray R. Councilman provided thoughtful and wise legal counsel to the City of Lake Forest, rendering advice to city officials, officers, and employees on all city business as well as successfully defending municipal rights in many areas including prevailing in various landmark decisions. And whereas Murray R. Councilman was a teacher and a mentor to many, but more than that, he encouraged those around him and made those who had the privilege of working with him more confident and successful than they would have been without his guidance. And whereas city officials, officers, and employees work diligently together on many projects with Murray R. Councilman and develop long-lasting friendships, despite the fact that he was a lifelong St. Louis Cardinal fan in a Cubs-White Sox territory. And whereas Murray R. Councilman was a high respected in all legal fields, advising many young lawyers, who served on many boards and served as the youngest alderman ever elected in Waukegan, Illinois. Whereas Murray R. Councilman was a beloved husband, loving father, grandfather, and a true community leader. His contributions to Lake Forest were significant and he will be missed. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council that its deepest sympathy goes out to his wife, Gwen, and family, and be it further resolved that the city clerk be and is hereby instructed to deliver a copy of this resolution duly signed by the mayor to the family of Murray R. Councilman this 20th day of January, 2015. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution, please? So moved. Do I have a second. second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. On behalf of all of us at the City of Lake Forest, you are de deepest sympathy. Uh, Kathy, did you care to make a comment? You know, I just would briefly like to, like to say a, a few words. I, I did not know Murray well. Uh, but like most Lake County attorneys, I always knew of him uh, for his enthusiasm, his vigilance for the law, and for his unforgettable presence wherever he went. He guided Lake Forest through much as our city was rapidly changing, and he was always known and respected for his intelligence, his integrity, and his willingness to mentor others. Uh, we're proud and honored that he served as our city attorney. I know he has family here today. I, I see his daughter, Anne, as well, who I know served with him uh, for, for a long time. And uh, we're very, very grateful uh, for his service. Thank you. I have two other uh, short items to balance my report. Uh, we recently learned of the passing of Marilyn Almo. Marilyn served on the Cemetery Commission from 1992 to 2001 and as chair of that committee during that time, and the council wants to offer its deepest sympathy to the family. Also, after 12 years of service to the city of Lake Forest, Shelly Walker will be leaving the organization. She's decided to take a job promotion with Round Lake as an executive assistant to the superintendent of schools. We will miss her, we will miss her smile, and we wish her great, great success. And that is the end of my report, and I would now ask everyone to please stand for the retiring of the colors by the Lake Forest Police Department Honor Guard, and please remove any non-religious headwear.
You can be seated. Yeah. <laughs> Chief Held, on behalf of the council and the residents, please thank the color guard. It was great to have them here. It made the, the meeting very special. Thank you. That concludes my report. Next item on the agenda, comments by City Manager Bob Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Earlier this evening, you heard a report from uh, Ty Magnuson and Chris Mossbarger uh, regarding the uh, joint task force report from Lake Forest uh, Parks and Recreation and the Lake Bluff Park District as um, uh, one of the recommendations that was set forth in that report earlier is gonna be presented to you now uh, by uh, Sally Swarthout. And I think Alderman Edelman will assist in that in uh, starting to implement some of those recommendations. So Sally, if I could ask you to please come forward. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Um, I am pleased to be here in front of the city council, city manager, to present uh, the timeline of the recommendations that you heard earlier from the joint task force. As they went through their um, summary of suggestions, there are quite a few on the list, and I felt it was important to give you um, a synopsis of what they have requested staff from Lake, Forest, Lake Bluff Park District as well as Lake Forest Parks and Recreation to investigate and possibly implement. <clears throat> and up here is a quick listing of the recommendations that came out of the year and a half of investigation and they included things as development of a golf joint task force reviewing common capital improvement expenses as well as removing non-resident fees for the collaborative communities the task force felt it was important that we go out to the commu two communities and survey um, to measure a reciprocity and the cost sharing opportunities that citizens feel uh, might be opportunities research and uh, offer joint additional programming opportunities. We currently do share services for some of our programming and the joint task force felt that there were other options and encourage us to look further. Um, they wanted us to institute a fitness super fast, which you heard earlier has actually launched. Um, we have to do some marketing there, as well as cross market our non-duplicated programs track our beach usage, and offer joint training for the beach lifeguards. S what I have before you is a timeline as to how we're going to investigate and possibly implement these recommendations. So as we've, we've, I would like to show you that we have actually moved forward since the recommendations were presented to the two boards in August. In October, um, staff got together and developed a strategy for a possible Golf Joint Task Force, as well as the two directors did review common capital improvement expenses. This um, review will go on annually to make sure that we are finding efficiencies between the two entities. In November, uh, we did have a discussion of additional joint programming, um, and we will be carrying that further as more information comes to light. Again, we did institute the Fitness Super Pass, and hopefully that will pick up steam. And we did present to the Lake Forest Parks and Recreation Board the waiver of the non-resident fee policy. In descent, you'll um, remember that they did mention that they would like us to do some cross-marketing via the brochures. December uh, was a deadline to hit a key brochure and we did share some information that will show up in the summer and camps brochures, but we're hoping a full complement of cross-marketing will go out in the fall brochure um, ready for that registration. This month, January, um, we're hoping to issue a joint press release as we move forward, as well as we're presenting the um, request to waive those non-resident fees 
to you, Lake Forest City Council, for the Lake Bluff residents. Uh, we are also going to engage an outside consultant to separate, separately update 2008 operational review and analysis for Deer Path Golf Course and the Lake Bluff Golf Course. We are moving along. Uh, we, we have taken the direction that is important to keep this process moving and flowing. Um, in February, we plan, uh, Lake Bluff plans to, to present their request to waive fees for Lake Forest residents to the Park District Board. And then we plan to um, provide an update to the Park and Recreation Joint Task Force. Staff feels it's very important that they, we keep them updated as we go through this process of investigating and possibly implementing their recommendations. In March, <clears throat> we hope to implement that non-resident fee policy change if it is approved for the fall brochures. And we also plan to set um, a date to jointly train our lifeguards. Through this process, we uh, discovered that we actually use the same lifeguard governing agency, and we felt it would be very positive and um, great for the two facilities to have the guards cross-train in case of need for staff, as well as um, just to fill in holes and such when we get into those deep August days. As we move into the summer, we are going to track beach usage again at both facilities so we can have a greater amount of net data to um, provide information for the Joint Task Force to make decisions and recommendations based on opening up those two facilities to both residents, both sets of residents. And we are also going to continue um, discussing whether we can combine some specific programming area they did mention some such programs such as dance where quite possibly we could create some efficiencies utilizing space in both communities. In 2016, we plan to issue a community survey that would address the aquatic facility usage by Lake Forest <laughs> residents as well as the aquatic facility operational costs. And we'd like to request feedback on the reciprocity in the programming that we have offered in, in the year of 2015. Um, we plan to launch the Duke Golf Joint Task Force, as well as update parks and recreation boards, as well as you, the City Council. And so are there any questions based on the timeline? Questions for Sally or for Mike? I have, I have just an observation. Okay. Um, you, you touched on the, <clears throat> and by the way, I think this makes an awful lot of sense based on the presentation we heard before. It sounds like there's a lot of duplication and th there's some low hanging fruit here that needs to be picked. Um, if I read the numbers correctly in our package, roughly half of all the non-resident fees collected in Lake Forest for Lake Bluff residents or from Lake Bluff residents are from one program, which is the Dance Academy. Correct. And I'm wondering, and you may you touched on maybe sharing facilities or what have you. Um, I assume, given that that's such a popular program, you spent some extra time analyzing it and trying to decide what to do. And maybe, I mean, it's it's a it is actually a significant revenue item uh, for us. It is a significant revenue item, and we have discussed it, and we still continue to investigate it because we need to make sure that we have enough space to take in additional registrations. But I think by reviewing and discussing that possibility of combining and utilizing space in Lake Bluff, that will open up the opportunity to take in additional registrations for that one programming area. So is it a competitive, I mean, is this one of those programs where you have to camp on the rec department's doorstep <laughs> in the morning to get in? Uh, you know, and we're turning people away? Or, I'm, honestly, I, no, I'm just curious. I, I can't decide if I'm happy to say no, it's not quite that bad because we are a very healthy program, but we do still have room to take some registrants within. So, so uh, I, 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 that, one, that one got my attention. Yeah. It, it's so significant. I mean, it's a, roughly a $50,000 a year source of revenue to the city, to the rec True. department. And, uh, and this is going to be waived. There are a couple others that, that add up to some, but there aren't three more, if you put them all together, that add up to that. So um, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned about, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, walking away from that revenue. 
Um, <clears throat> if you look at the chart, which I can pull up for you, if you actually go across the chart to the, um, the one, two, three, fourth column, you'll actually see the surcharge amount for that program, which would be the amount that is paid in non-resident fee over the base registration. So really for dance, it's a $10,000 loss in revenue. You do not lose the total 50,000. Okay. So it's, we still have that base registration fee. Okay. Okay. So, so this is, so the base fee is the same fee that's paid by Lake Forest residents. And then on top of that, there's a surcharge yes. and that's the, that amounts yes, to 10,000. Yes, there's 10, a percentage okay. increase for non-resident registration. Okay. And that is what we are asking you waive is that that percentage increase for Lake Bluff residents. And, and do we have any kind of reason to expect that the roughly 25 additional registrants are, are really sensitive to that fee? In other words, if you waive the, the fee, you think, you'll get more, you, you think you'll get 25 more participants? I do. I'm very confident that, um, let me pull the chart up so people can see what we're talking about, if that's okay with you. Um, George, you scared me with that $50,000 number. <laughs> it's really the surcharge. Of the right, ATM understood. I, the surcharge. You scared me a little, too. Still half of, it's still and half of all. And it's not fair. But it's, <laughs> no, but, uh, but you know, it, it, the order of magnitude may be a little less, but it's still half of all the surcharge revenue that we get. Okay. Correct. And in the chart, you'll see the first column is total fees collected. So that is total registration fees across those nine programming areas. The next is the fees that we actually collect from Lake Bluff and the number of registrations that those fees are collected from. That fourth column is the surcharge. So that is the percentage increase that we levy for a non-resident. And then the following column is the number of registrations that you would need to make up for that surcharge uh, loss in revenue. And that's 25 registrations makes it is, up? It is 25 registrations. And it, so we, it would be 25 current registrations to make up the revenue lost would be 2.36 participants. For camps, it would be 25 for dance. So um, I was reading because the wrong of the lines, base, Because of the base, if you multiply that by the base, that's what you. Mm -hmm. And staff does feel confident because we think even if we didn't pick 25 up in the Dance Academy, we would certainly pick additional up at the Wildlife Discovery Center and Sterling Hall and possibly early childhood education because Lake Bluff's um, early childhood education, they don't have the enrichment courses that we have. They, they have their base preschool, but they don't have the enrichment. Well, and to put it in perspective, and I'm probably making your point for you here, <laughs> I just did the math. It's the surcharge is four hundred dollars per person. I mean, if it's ten, if twenty five people is ten thousand dollars, it's a roughly four hundred dollar surcharge. So that's for actually a, for a dance class. Right. It quite possibly so could be. So yes. if you waive that, I can see how some people right. might be swayed by a savings of that magnitude. Correct. I'm guessing quite a few people may be swayed by a savings of that magnitude, and but you you indicated, Sally, that there is capacity. There is capacity. There's actually capacity in all of those programs um, to take increase. You know, I look at the sailing number. That would be one program that I would worry about, but to take on four additional participants certainly is manageable. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the, only, the only downside I can see to this even remotely, and I'm frankly not seriously worried, but would be if we start getting, I, I do remember the days where you had to camp out on the, you know, on the, uh, for, the for the exercise program. And, and, the, and there wasn't, there was limited capacity and not everybody did get in. And I think we might get some pushback from our residents if it turned out that, that you know, we were treating everybody, whether a resident or not equally, not charging them more. And, and, and then we had residents who didn't get into the program. And, you know, I, but it, as long as we've got capacity, I think we deal with that if it happens. And, and, and to address, this is the right direction to go, I'm quite sure. And to address that, we would still keep our registration schedule the same. So currently, Lake Forest residents have the opportunity to register first. Perfect. And then there That's is a non-resident non -resident registration date two weeks later. That, that solves it. So that's great. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Sally? If not, I'd like to ask for approval to waive the non-resident programming fees for Lake Bluff residents per the recommendation of the Lake Bluff Lake Force Parks and Recreation Joint Task Force and dependent upon the reciprocal approval by the Lake Bluff Park District. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. A second. 
Second. Roll call, please. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Feidler? Aye. Alderman Pandelian? Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Adelman? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Seven yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Biddy, very much. We are currently under comments by council members. Any other comments by council members? This evening? Alderman Waldeck? I have a few quick ones from a public works perspective. Um, first, uh, my first comment involves salt. Uh, we are entering phase two of our new salting procedures and beginning January 16th, uh, running through February 16th, the city is continuing its sensible salting policy uh, in order to conserve salt, to save money, and to protect our environment. So as of January 16th, we are salting only the main streets as well as the curves, the intersections, and the hills of the side streets. We will be entering phase three beginning on February 16th. These same areas will be salted, uh, but they will be salted less. Uh, we think the plan has worked well so far. We've had some cooperation from Mother Nature, uh, and we hope that continues. And stay tuned. Thank you, Alderman Waldeck. Any other comments? One more brief comment. Uh, on Sunday, uh, Alderman Marino, my fellow Public Works Committee member, and I had the opportunity to tour the water plant. I know Alderman Tack, who serves uh, with us on the Public Works Committee, had toured the plant previously, and uh, it was quite an education. It really is a, an, an engineering marvel, and I want to extend our thanks to Mike Thomas, Dan Martin, and uh, the water crew that were out there. They were patient, they were uh, informative, they know more about water than either of us could ever learn in, in a lifetime. They are very, very dedicated, they're very passionate about their jobs, um, and we really, really appreciate uh, the, the time that they, they spent with us. It was a fascinating, fascinating experience. I, I urge everybody else, uh, if you have the opportunity, to, to take a tour of the plant. Um, Thanks very much. Uh, really appreciate it. Alderman Butler. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Schoenheider. Uh, I was just going to mention that uh, Alderman Waldeck and I represented the city at, I think it was um, called Lake County Leaders Summit. Is that right, Bob? Something like that. Um, we, had a, we, had a, we had a great time. Fortunately, uh, County Board Member Mike Rommel was present, and so there was pretty much nobody in the room that he didn't introduce us to, which was very helpful and, and handy. Um, the point of the meeting was really to bring people together in, to, to see if there were additional ways that we could all, first of all, learn more about what's happening in the, in the county uh, in terms of the forest preserve and, and uh, the forest. It was, it was a sort of a dog and pony with the forest preserve and the, and the uh, county board. Uh, presenting things, but we were supposed to figure out if there were additional ways that we could be doing collaborative things, and and it was very interesting. And I think all it seemed like most of the tables had very lively discussions, and then people stood up afterwards and sort of advocated for their ideas of partnerships and so on. It did strike me, um, and Kathy, I think you and I talked about this a little bit. There is a, a huge amount about Lake County that I really I, th that I don't know about. Um, including a fairly extensive number of websites listing, you know, things to do with kids in, in, uh, in, in Lake County. And with my uh, grandmother hat on, I was particularly interested in that. So I'm certainly going to try to avail myself of some of the resources that I learned about. And it seems possible that we might be able to do even more, I don't know if Susan's still here, uh, even more with our, with our dialogue in, in, linking to, in linking to some of the, uh, the things that are going on in the county. So it was great, but it was a great, it was a great day and, and certainly enhanced by having uh, former, former Mayor Rommel there to, uh, to uh, squire us around. It was great, it was great. Thank you, Alderman Butler. Any other comments by the council? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, opportunity for citizens to address the council on non-agenda items. Anyone care to address the council this evening? Seeing none, move on to item number five, items for omnibus vote consideration. There are four of them this evening, as we always do. If any council member would like to take anyone individually, we'll take that separately. Otherwise, I'll ask for a motion to approve all four at the end. Item number one, approval of the January 5th, 2015 City Council meeting minutes. Number two, award of bid for a replacement of marked police cars included in the FY16 capital equipment budget. <coughs> Number three, award of bid for the replacement of an administrative vehicle for the fire department included in the FY2016 capital equipment budget. 
And number four, award of bid for replacement of the Croya vehicle. Any alderman wish to take any of those items individually? <coughs> if not, I'll ask for a motion to approve the omnibus. So moved. So second. second. Full call vote, please, Biddy. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Pandelion? Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Seven yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item in the agenda ordinances, consideration of a recommendation from the Plan Commission in support of approval of ordinances pertaining to the establishment of a tax increment financing district on a 10 acre site located on the northwest corner of Laurel and Western Avenues. This is the final approval. Uh, Kathy Cerniak, Director of Community Development, actually briefed the Finance Committee on this matter uh, during the Finance Committee period. Is, are there any other questions of Kathy or any further discussion on this matter? If not, I will ask for a motion to uh, grant final approval of each of the three ordinances noted above. So moved. I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Pandelion? Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Seven yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Biddy, very much. We did also go through. Uh, Bob's discussion about approval of an ordinance that allows for the revisiting amendment re, uh, stating of some of the, of the of the overall city ordinances. So we did discuss that at well at uh, Finance Committee as well as Bob brought us up to speed on the community goals and priorities. Uh, any other items this evening under new business? We need to vote on the. Oh, I missed that one. Got it. Thank you. Uh, okay, I do uh, then any other any discussion on that matter? If not, I do need approval for the final reading of an ordinance that allows for the revising amendment, restating, codifying, and compiling of existing ordinances. So move. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Alderman Waldeck. Aye. Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Pandelion. Aye. Alderman Tack. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg. Aye. Alderman Adelman. Aye. Alderman Moreno. Aye. Seven yay, zero nay, motion carries. Thank you, thank you for catching that. Uh, any other new business this evening? Any additional items to come before the council? If not, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, have a good evening. Oh. Uh, right. I have no idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff.